Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's Dr. J ready to kick off the 2023 National Entrepreneurship Week. Uh, if you don't know, this week we kick off the National Entrepreneurship Week. Let me tell you what that's all about. So National Entrepreneurship Week is a congressionally chartered week dedicated to empowering entrepreneurship across the United States. The annual initiative was relaunched in 2017 as National Entrepreneurship Week. Uh, to bring together a network of partners from Maui to Miami to educate, engage, and build equitable access to America's entrepreneurship ecosystem. So again, today's the first day. It goes all week. Um, and what I'm going to do this week as, as uh, someone who is passionate about entrepreneurship is today I'm going to talk, you know, kick it off, talk about what the plan is for the rest of the week, and then, of course, talk about ad tech entrepreneurship because i think that's an important topic to talk about that no one it's always one of those things that is is it needs to be talked about um because there's a lot of things going on and that's one of my specialties as as well um and then of course we have some special guests tuesday wednesday and thursday so i'm very excited about that so i'll talk about that um and of course why entrepreneurship why it's important to talk about entrepreneurship so I'm going to kick it off first of, of what we have going on for the rest of the week. So tomorrow we have a special guest uh, to talk about how entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship or entrepreneurs can purchase a home. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, I'm not going to get too much into it because I want to let the guest speaker talk about that. But if you're an entrepreneur, you can still purchase a home. Sometimes it can be difficult depending on the banks and all that stuff. But there are ways for those of you who are entrepreneurs to purchase a home and we'll talk about how that process goes about. So I'm excited about that guest speaker. Then we have another guest speaker on Wednesday to talk about open educational resources in entrepreneurship education. So I'm very excited about that um, because open education is, I think is a very important topic, especially with the cost of books being so significantly high over the past decade or so. Um, how can entrepreneurship education embrace open open education. And I think that's a really important topic to talk about. And then Thursday, we're going to talk about the entrepreneurial mindset profile, which I'm extremely excited about. Um, I myself am a certified practitioner of the entrepreneurial mindset profile. And on Thursday, we'll have the person who was in charge of the entrepreneurial mindset profile. Um, and basically what the EM, we're short for EMP, is, is, is an assessment tool that examines the skills and capabilities to drive growth and innovation. So the EMP looks at seven personality skills and seven skills uh, skills. And I'm very excited about that conversation as well on Thursdays because um, a few months ago now, I had a conversation with this individual and we're talking about the EMP mindset. And uh, this is, this is of course, this is, not the per this is not the guest speaker for this. This is a completely separate person. We're talking about, you know, why is it important to do this EMP assessment on young professionals? Um, and, you know, talking about the importance of it, yes, there is a cost, um, but I'm willing to work with you on it. And, you know, it's like, well, I could just take a free assessment. And I'm like, anything that's free is never probably good because there's always a catch to it, right? And how many times have you gone online and then you take this free assessment, but it's like, if you want the full access, you got to pay this, or it just gives you basic information. You're like, oh, I want to know more. Um you know, free is not always good, right? It's like there's never free. It's like the whole notion of there's never free lunch. So, you know, that's where we're going to talk about the EMP, why it's important, why you should take it. If you've never taken an, a, such an assessment, why you should and why that EMP is. It's not always related to starting a business, which is the awesome thing about that assessment. So I'm really excited about this. That's what we have going on this week. And then Friday, of course, I'll recap what we talked about all week. Um, and of course, you know, talk about entrepreneurship in a sense. And of course, there's more entrepreneurship videos that go on my YouTube channel. To check that out, log in and, and feel free to check that out. So that's what we'll talk about this week for National Entrepreneurship Week. So I'm very, very, um, very humbly excited about that. Um, I think it's very important to talk about entrepreneurship because I think that's a word. And so, we talk, so that's what this week is all about. Well, touch on my next topic about why this is an important topic to talk about uh, an entrepreneurship in a sense. I think that the word entrepreneurship has been thrown around way too much uh, in a sense that people, 
people don't understand the real connotation of what entrepreneurship is or what an entrepreneur is, right? Entrepreneurship is about um, seeing a a some seeing a problem in the world or seeing something that you can solve, right? A pain, a, a pain that you're solving for someone or, or a group of individuals. And you know, building a, 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 a you either you're building a service or a product to solve that pain, right? And that that's profitable, that you're gonna make money from it in a sense, right? We're talking about just regular entrepreneurship. And I think, and of course you're building a system around that business, around the product or service, so that if the entrepreneur leaves it, it's still running, right? That's what entrepreneurship is about. It's about creating a system, right? After you've you 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 brought a product or service to solve a problem, right? You bring that to, to the market. You build a system around it for that way that the wheels keep continue turning, even when you're not there, right? And that's what real entrepreneurship is about. It's not about you, you know. It's one thing to be a consultant because if you're a pure consultant and if you're not working, you're not earning money, then of course it's, it, you're not, you know, it's not really entrepreneurship. Now, if you built a system where you leave and the wheels continue turning without you being there, hey, you build something entrepreneurial there. Um, and of course, I've talked more about that in other videos. Um, so if you check out my videos on my YouTube channel, you see how I talk about entrepreneurship, talk about the basics and, and, and such. So that and I and I think people just need to stop throwing that word around um, and calling themselves like I never have called myself uh, an entrepreneur. Like I don't even I don't even like calling myself that word. I mean I can educate you on that, but it's it's not something, you know. Oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Like no, right? Um, and I and I think that's that's just something you just need to be careful about um, walking around and calling yourself an entrepreneur when you're really not. Um, yeah, that's just my opinion. That's just my sitting. That's my two cents on it. Uh, uh, with and I've, and the people who I've met, really uh, true entrepreneurs, right, who built businesses and just leave it and then continue turning. Like I've never really heard them call themselves entrepreneurs. Like I've never heard Bill Gates call himself. I'm an entrepreneur. Maybe he has, but I had never heard of him. Um, you know, like Elon Musk either. Right? He's never. I mean, look, he's not. He, he can leave Tesla. And Tesla will still run. Not will it run the same? Who knows? Um, but anyway, that's that's my connotation of entrepreneurship. So of, co of course, this week is really not talking about entrepreneurship, the one in the context, because you can watch those videos on my YouTube channel. But how can we look at entrepreneurship from a different perspective? You know, if you're an entrepreneur, I want to purchase a home. You know, how can entrepreneurship educators, um, you know, take open education and use it for the best sense for the classroom? And of course, the entrepreneur mindset profile assessment. And I think that's very important for both entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs. Um, as well. So I definitely am looking forward to that. Um, and so now the main topic of discussion that I want to talk about is, um, I think the really important one is ed tech entrepreneurship, right? Ed tech or educational technology has been a word thrown out around a lot as well in education. Um, you can just Google ed tech tools for the classroom and you're going to get a bunch of links. Um, because ad tech tools is such broad, right? I mean, you can look, Zoom can technically be, in a sense, an ad tech tool. Um, Satori is another tool. Um, in one sense, they try to make Twitter an ad tech tool, but I'm like, mm, not really. Uh, you know, there, there's other, Pressy is another ad tech tool out there, right? Um, there's, a, there's a plethora amount of ad tech tools, both in K-12 and in higher education, that one an educator can use for the classroom, right? Um, and so that that is, I mean, if you just look up, let's just like, if you go on, on Google right now, what is def, ed tech, what is ed tech, right? Um, the definition of it is just, you, you don't, like there's like, what, watch, type it up. What is the definition of, of ed tech, right? Put it up. There's like a bunch of tools. There's a bunch of uh, definitions out there, right? I mean, one of the real definitions of it is this: the the study that investigates the process of analyzing, design, developing, implementing, and evaluating the structural environment, learners, and learning process in order to improve teaching and learning. There's a lot of definitions out there for ed tech. 
But one of the things that ad tech does, and when you look at educational technology, is that you're not only launching a tool for the classroom, but you're also investigating and learning how this improves teaching and learning, right? You can't put out an ed tech tool for the sake of just putting an ed tech tool out there in the classroom. And when it comes to ed tech startup, ed tech entrepreneurship, if you're thinking about launching an ed tech tool for the classroom, like you want to start an ed tech, you know, you want you want to start an ed tech um, business. Like, first of all, you have to really think about why you're going to do it. There was an article recently, and I and I and I, it, it boggled my mind. Education Week put out an article back in August 26 of last year. The title of it is called "The Number of Ed Tech Tools School Districts Use Has Almost Tripled," and that's a problem. Um, I can't agree with you more on that. Just check this statistic, this statistic out about ed tech tools in the classroom. In between the school year of 2017 and 2018, there was about 500, 548 tools. Between the school year of 2021 and 2022, right, right at the height of the pandemic, right, remember the COVID pandemic, there was about 1,417 tools, according to a report released by the, by Learn Platform, an educational technology company that helps districts measure in the use of effectiveness of their digital products. From 548 in 2017 to 1,417 in 2021 school year, and that's probably only increasing even more so. There's way, way, way too many, too many tools out there. I mean. How do, as an educator, do you select a tool to use when there's so many out there? There's always too many tools out there. Um, you know, and one of the, like, just among the popular ones, Kahoot, Look It, Quiz It, um, Grammarly, right, another uh, tech tool. How do you select one to use? So, I mean, just think about that. If you're going to be in the ed tech startup world, you got about 1,400 ed tech tools already in market. How is yours going to be different, right? How are you going to, 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 to make yours different from the other ones out there? Not only that, how are you going to get yourself in the marketplace to get school districts to buy into your product? I remember one call, like I've had experience in K-12 and one of the things that K-12 teachers, and I can't speak for all, so I'm not speaking for all the educators, but I've heard comments before from conferences and such and meeting with and talking with educators in K-12 is like, first of all, we don't have the time to be learning about this new ed tech tool, right? We can't take time away from the classroom to learn about an ed tech tool, right? There's just not, and this was way before the pandemic, but, but this conversation was going on way before the, so I can't even imagine now, they're t if you've heard, heard the news, like teachers right now are in a shortage and they're being like, they're dropping out like flash from the system and, and, and they're just, their time is even less than it was before. And so to grab a teacher and tell her, hey, we're going to use this new ad tech tool to get them to train them on this new tool. Not only that, but how does the ad tech tool improve learning? Right. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you can't build a tool for the sake of building a tool. How is this going to solve a problem in the education? Right. How is this going to solve a problem? And, but the problem is the learning. Right. How is this going to improve learning for my students? Right. I have a problem. Students are not learning the content. How is this ad tech tool going to help me improve the learning? You have to think about that. Right. As an ad tech tool. Again, because you have they're they're measuring the they're measuring the, the effectiveness of a tool, right? If you're using, for example, Quizlet or uh, uh, let's just say, for example, you're using uh, Kahoot, right? A very famous uh, tech tool. How is how is Kahoot going to uh, improve learning, right? And and again, you have to think about that as well. Um, and so. Again, if you're going to get into that world, that's totally fine. I, I don't blame you. I mean, if you find the opportunity to do so, go ahead. Um, and another thing I would say, so think about that, because you're you're up against 1,400 products already in the marketplace in school districts alone and in higher education as well, right? Another one you have to think about is the cost factor, right? School districts are kind of, depending on the school district, is already tight on money. 
So how are you going to get them to buy and to purchase into a, a product or your product or your service? So the cost factor is one that you have to think about as well. Um, and another thing too, that, that I would, for those of you getting into the ad tech startup world uh, or thinking about produce, do, you know, creating a product or service in the ad tech world is who is part of your team? Uh, I, a few weeks ago, a month ago, actually in November, I believe I had this interview. I did this interview and I'll, and I'll post it up in, in, in the, I'll post it up in the comments later. Um, we we're talking to this, we were I talked to this individual and we're having an interview and conversation about ed tech startups. And I, and I was mentioning how, I think one of the ways that an ed tech startup can take themselves serious is, is, is seeing who, if part of the team has a former educator on their team, right? Someone who has at least five years of experience in education. Let's say, for example, you're doing a K-12 tool, right? For K-12, you should at least have one or two people, part of your team who have at least five or more years of experience in that in K-12 on your team. And not just someone in an advisory role, that, that could be one, but someone who's on the day-to-day -day, day -day task of this company. And why? Because that individual, individuals will be able to tell you, like from the user experience, is this going to be a tool effective for the classroom, for the learning environment? And not only that, but will teachers find it ease of use? Right? You have to think about those two things because I've seen companies or, or ed tech startups where like they don't have an educator on their team. And you can tell they have no idea. The tool may be cool, but there's going to be very little buy-in. Um, and the way you communicate with educators is a whole different animal as well. You can't walk into an environment and then downgrade or denigrate teachers and saying that I'm smarter than you. This is the greatest tool in the world. You're not going to get buy-in from them. And especially not only K-12 educators, but let's say, for example, you're going to go talk to higher ed professionals like which all of them have PhDs, basically, and they're very smart, and they're probably the top of the cream in, in, in their topic, right? And you come in there talking like, I know better than you, like, you're going to get kicked out the door. Uh, so you really have to be conscious as have someone in your team of, of one or two people who know that world, know how to communicate, know what it takes to, to implement an effective tool that's going to enhance learning, um, and have an ease of use for your product. The, the, the tools that I use for the classroom, right? I use uh, some of the tools I use is I use YouTube. Well, YouTube is freaking easy to use, but not only that, but it's an effective tool for learning because I find videos that are five minutes or shorter, part of the discussion board that is, a, is, is related to it, right? That's one way. So Tori, which is an awesome tool for presentations and you can get uh, students to also be part of it, right? It's an ease of use product and it's a cloud-based system, right? I don't have to download no hardware. Um, it's an easy tool to use, right? So Tori as well, it's an ease of use and uh, ease of use product. Uh, Pixton, right? P-I-X-T-O-N is a, ca a cartoon maker that you can, you can use for the classroom as well. It's a cloud-based system. It's easy to use and it's an effective way for students to learn. Um, I you know you may be thinking all cartoons in the classroom. Uh, well, cartoons in the classroom can be effective. Um, and there's research about that. Uh, so again, this is some of the tools I use, right? And again, just look what I just said. I said it's an ease of use. It's an effective tool for learning, right? Um, and, and it's easy to access because it's a cloud-based system, right? I really don't have to download no hardware. That's what I look at when an ad tech tool. So just think about those things if you're, if you're looking into the ad tech world startup. Um, look at the other tools that are being used um, and how can you make it more effective? Again, you're in a competition against 1400 other products. Um, and so, and, and some of these um, tools are, are dominate, like Kahoot dominates, like Kahoot's a big conglomerate in the ad tech space. Prezi is another one, right? Um, you know, I'm a certified Prezi uh, educator, so I can, you know, teach how to use Prezi. So I'm just, just a short note on that. Um, and I've used Kahoot as well in the classroom. You know, of course, you have Quizlet as well. So think about those things. 
Um, and so just to recap in the ad tech space world of startup, again, you are competing against 1400 other products. You need to have an ease of use product. You have to make sure it's an engaging learning product and make sure that someone on your team uh, is, is, has experience in the classroom and whether it's K-12 or higher education, whichever, which one, ever one you're targeting towards, make sure those individuals have those, that experience in, in, in the classroom, um, because it will definitely help have a better product because it makes no sense to build a product or service. Um, if no one on your team has ever had any experience with it, you know, um, it's like designing a car and no one on your team knows how to drive a car. Um, I, the, the reason I say that story is because I remember a long time ago, years ago, um, I was at this university and this entrepreneurship educator where he was head of the department of business. And he asked me to come out and listen to this pitch of these students. They were pitching a product. It was like a wheelchair. Um, it was a wheelchair that had like, it was like an ease of use wheelchair specifically for more like third world countries where the terrain is really bad, but these wheels, these special wheels could, could go against these terrains and it was easy to fold. And it was a cool product and everything. And I saw their pitch. He, he asked me to come out and listen to their pitch and provide any, any, you know, provide any feedback. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll come and check out the product. <laughs> it was a, it was a good product. It was a pitch. And I asked them, I said, has anybody who actually uses a wheelchair ever used this product? And the, the, the people pitching, they went blank. They all looked at each other like, oh, like lost. And they, they looked at the chair of the department like, oh, like, like, no. Well, then how do you know it's going to be a great product? Like, how do you know it's an easy thing? You're telling me all these wonderful things about this wheelchair, but none of you use, use a wheelchair on a daily basis. None of you are having on a wheelchair. So how do you know this thing is going to actually work? And so they got somebody, they found somebody really quick who actually is in the wheelchair and they used it and they provide all their feedback. And I go, well, you should have thought about this a long time ago to have someone actually who knows how to, who's been in, who's on a wheelchair to use your product so you could talk about it. Um, and I say that story just to talk about the ed tech thing, right? Make sure that someone on your team or someone actually has used your product so they can provide you feedback before you go big on the market or pitch it to other folks. Anyway, all right, I'm wrapping this up. Um, and of course, starting this today, uh, this today of the National Entrepreneurship Week. Again, we have a PAX uh, schedule this, this, this tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. So please look out, subscribe to this YouTube channel, um, Dr. Jerry Real Talk, subscribe to the Facebook and of course, Twitter. And we will see you tomorrow and the rest of this week. And make sure you follow the hashtag NATL eShip Week. Um, and we'll see you all next time.